We're going to start with section 1.1, which is on an introduction to graphing. So recall that the graph of an equation is the set of all ordered pairs that satisfy that equation. So what I mean by satisfying an equation is that if you were to take the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate and plug them in, you would get a statement that's true. As a quick example, if you had the equation y plus x equals 1, this equation would have, a would have a graph which contains the point 0, 1, because when you plug in x equals 0 and y equals 1, you get 1 equals 1, which is a true statement. Certainly, this graph all co also contains the point negative 2, 3 for the same reason. Now, of course, we have an infinite number of points which lie along this graph. These are only two such points. In general, if your equation has the form ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are all numbers, constants that is, and not a and b are both zero, then the graph is the shape of a line. We'll almost always in this class call x the independent variable and y the dependent variable. Now, as you progress in your mathematical career, this won't always be the case. For instance, later on, you may call x the dependent variable with independent variable, for instance, t. But for us, most of the time, x is going to be the independent variable. Now let's take a look at an example. We want to sketch the graph of the following two equations, 2x minus 7y equals negative 3, and 3x plus 2y equals 1. So we'll start out the solution of this example by looking at the equation 2x minus 7y equals negative 3. Now we know from the last slide that the graph of this equation is a line, so what we need to do now is find any two distinct points which lie along that line. The easiest way to do this is to find a few x values and their corresponding y values and keep track of these numbers in a t-chart. Now if we're especially clever about things and we choose our x values appropriately, we can avoid fractions here. For instance, let's choose x equals 2. So we're going to go back to this equation, we're going to plug in 2 for x. Now you'll notice here that when I plug in 2, I make sure to put it in parentheses. This is a good habit to get into, and you'll thank yourself for it by avoiding a lot of mistakes later. So what we're going to do is solve this equation for y by first subtracting 4 from both sides, which will give 7y equals minus 7. We then divide both sides by negative 7, and that'll give us y equals 1. So I consider this some scratch work. So we'll go over here and we'll plug in the x value 2, which has the y value 1. Now I'm not going to do the scratch work this time around, but if you plug in x equals negative 5, you should verify the fact that the corresponding y value is y equals negative 1. What this tells us is that there's two points that lie along this line, one with coordinates 2 comma 1, and the other with coordinates minus 5 comma minus 1. What we're going to do now is go to our graph, and we're going to plot the points 2 comma 1 and negative 5 comma negative 1. So I've drawn my coordinate axes here, and you'll notice that the x-axis is always the horizontal one, and the y-axis is always going to be the vertical one. So to plot the point 2, 1, I'm going to go over two tick marks in the x direction and one tick mark up in the y direction. And then I'm going to lay down a point at the ordered pair 2, comma 1. This point lies along the graph. Now you'll notice here that I didn't bother labeling my tick marks. The assumption is that if there's no labels, the tick marks stand for one unit in each direction. So we're going to do something similar. We're going to go back five units, one, two, three, four, five, in the x direction. And then we're going to go down one unit in the y direction. And once again, we're going to put a point there. Now once you have your two distinct points which lie along a line, you just lay down a straight edge or a ruler and you draw a line in between them. I've drawn the line here in yellow and you'll notice that there are no arrows at the end of my graph. I don't bother putting arrows at the end of my graph because nine times out of ten the arrows are going to be there. And it's a lot of wasted time and effort to draw arrows on every single graph we ever make. So the assumption is if there's nothing at the end of the graph it keeps on going in the same pattern that you see. At this point, you want to go ahead and pause the video and try to repeat those steps for the equation 3x plus 2y equals 1. Your x values may not look exactly like mine, but I've chosen to use x equals 1 and minus 1 here. If your x values are a little bit different, it won't matter. You'll still get the same graph. It's just your points may look a little bit different. So when I plug in x equals 1 and I solve the equation for y, what I get is y equals minus 1. And when I plug in x equals minus 1, I get y equals 2. So once again, I'm going to go back to my axes here. 
my xy coordinate plane, and I'm going to plug in the two points 1 comma minus 1, which is right here, and minus 1 comma 2, which is right here. Once I have those points, I'm going to lay down my straight edge and draw a line between them. Now even if you chose different x values and found different corresponding y values, your graph should look the same. So now we're going to do a similar example, but the equations are a little bit more complicated. So in this example, we want to sketch a graph of the following two equations by plotting a few points. So the first equation is y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1, and the second equation is y equals minus x squared plus x minus 3. So we're going to solve the first half of this example by graphing y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Once again, we're going to take a look at a few different x values on a t-chart. So there's a natural question here. How do you go about choosing the x values to put on your t-chart? How many x values do you pick? How closely spaced should they be? How spread apart should they be? Uh, where do you start and where do you end? Unfortunately, our tools at this point are not sophisticated enough to answer these questions in a sort of meaningful way. So I'm just going to give you some x values to work with here. So we'll start from x equals 1 and we'll move 2 units to the left and 2 unit units to the right. So we'll include x equals 1, 0, minus 1, and then 2 units to the right being x equals 2 and x equals 3. So this will give us 5 points and that's a, a, a pretty good number of points to get a picture of what this particular graph is going to look like. Now we're going to take each one of these x values and plug them in to get the corresponding y value. So I'm going to do some scratch work over here on the left hand or on the right hand side and I'm going to set y equal and now I'm going to take x equals minus 1 and plug it in. Now I'm making sure to put minus 1 in parentheses here. Again, it's a good habit to get yourself into. So we get minus 1 quantity squared minus 2 times minus 1 and then finally plus 1. Minus 1 squared is 1. Minus minus 2 makes plus 2 here. Plus 1 gives y equals 4. So we're going to go over here to our t chart and we're going to put in y equals 4. And we're going to do something similar but I'm not going to show the scratch work for x equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. So you should verify here that when you plug in x equals 0, you get y equals 1. When you plug in x equals 1, you get y equals 0. When you plug in x equals 2, you get y equals 1. And finally, when you plug in x equals 3, you get y equals 4 once again. So once again, I'm going to go over to my set of axes here, and I'm just going to put the tick marks that I need for my x values and their corresponding y values. So I need one in the negative x direction, I need three in the positive x direction, and then I need four up in the positive y direction. So I'm going to plot my point negative one, four, that goes here, zero, one, one, zero, two, one is next, and then finally over three and up four, that's this point here. And we're going to connect these points with a smooth continuous curve and what we get is something that looks roughly like this. Now this is good enough for our purposes in this particular case. There's not a lot more that we can do here, but it's a pretty good graph. Now at this point of the video, you want to go ahead and pause to work your way through graphing the equation y equals negative x squared plus x minus 3, where the x values that you're going to use here are x equals minus 2 minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So go ahead and pause the video and try to work your way through this. Come back when you're done with your solution. So what you should have seen here is that when you plug in x equals minus 2 to this equation, you get y equals minus 9. When you plug in x equals minus 1, you get y equals minus 5. When you plug in x equals 0, you get y equals minus 3. And then similarly, when you plug in x equals 1, you get y equals minus 3. And finally, when you plug in x equals 2, you get y equals minus 5 once again. So we're once again going to draw our axes here. And we're just going to put the tick marks that we need. So we need to go down 9 in the y direction here. We need to go back 2 in the x direction and over 2 to the right in the positive y direction. So first we're going to plot the point minus 2 minus 9, which is here minus 1 minus 5, which is here, 
0 minus 3, which is here, 1 minus 3 here, and finally 2 minus 5 over here. Now you'll notice this graph looks more or less the same as what we saw before. We're going to find out later on in the semester that this is called a parabola. We're getting points that are sort of unevenly spread from side to side, but we don't really have enough tools to tell us analytically that that's the case. So we're just going to draw a smooth continuous curve through these points that looks something like this, and that's good enough to get the job done. Now another thing that I want to show you how to do is to graph this thing on your calculator. And not only do I want you to be able to graph this on your calculator, I want you to be able to find those corresponding y values for these particular x values using something called the table. So another way to graph this equation is to use our calculator. And to do that, we're going to use the y equals menu. So if you have a TI-83 or a TI-84, the button presses will be pretty much the same here. So up on the top left hand corner of the sort of button panel in your calculator is this button that says y equals. So if you press that, what you should see is a menu that looks something like this. So essentially what you're saying here is y equals some function of x, y2 equals some function of x, and on down the line if you scroll down a little bit it'll go all the way down to y sub 10. We just want to use y sub 1 here. So I'm going to work with the second half of this example, minus x squared plus x minus 3. So you'll notice I use this button here to enter an x, and there's another way to enter x down here in the bottom, that little x there, but it's far qu quicker to use this button up here to enter an x. So from here, if you hit the graph button, which is the top right hand button on your, on your calculator, you'll see a picture of that graph that we drew by hand just a minute ago. Now suppose that we wanted to get a T chart, uh, a bunch of X values and their corresponding Y values. For that purpose, we're going to use what's called the table. So if you hit this second button over here, and then the graph button, it's going to take you into the table. You'll notice that the yellow button over here corresponds to the yellow text above this graph button up in the corner here. So if you hit second and then the graph button, it'll take you into something called the table. Now I've got some X values entered here already, but what you may see is a lot of different X values that you can't change. The way to set your table up, if this is the first time you've used it, is to hit the second button and then the window button. That's going to take you into the table set menu. Notice the table set written in yellow above the window button. So what you're going to do is scroll down to the independent variable and make sure that ask is highlighted. Mine was already highlighted and after you set this the first time yours will be as well. You'll never have to change this again unless your calculator runs out of batteries. So it's very likely that if you've never used the table before that your table set menu looks like this. So you want to go down here, highlight ask, hit enter, and that'll change the independent variable to something that you can enter. So from here we're going to go back into the table, so we're going to hit second and then the graph button again. And we're going to start entering the x values that we used when we did this by hand. So recall that those x values were minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now you'll notice that the y values are being filled in for us here. So essentially what your calculator is doing is it's looking in the y equals menu and what it's finding under the y1 spot is minus x squared plus x minus 3, which is exactly the equation that we're trying to graph. And then it's taking those x values from this first column, plugging it into that equation and coming out with the following y values. These are exactly the y values that we found by hand before, it's just this is a very quick way of plugging numbers into a function and it's a handy thing to keep in mind. So that th concludes the lesson from section 1.1. I'll see you back here for section 1.2.